Greetings, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. It is the dream of many people to purchase homes. While many people choose to purchase a home that is already built, others may choose to build from the ground up. Either way, the builder is required to use a blueprint. A blueprint is defined as a design or a plan put on paper for the purpose of constructing a building successfully. The same way construction workers follow the blueprint in order to successfully build a house, likewise, Christians who want to build a solid family must be willing to follow God's blueprint to do so. Stay tuned as we discuss the design that God has given us to follow, God's blueprint for family. We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for tuning in to God's Blueprint for Family. Uh, and uh, it's always a pleasure to bring God's word to you concerning his plan for family. And as we've stated before in this broadcast that um, <clears throat> we believe it's important that we study uh, God's word concerning family and what his idea for family is because it's very evident that um, the enemy has launched an all-out attack against family and against the family unit and it starts with for the most part the marriage <clears throat> and it trickles down to the children you see in that home and so many of our young people today are coming from broken homes and don't know whether what a family a true family unit is and so of course they grow up and want to get married and since they haven't seen a good example are you know of a family and what you know a strong father is or what a strong mother is um, they just tend to get lost in the shuffle and they tend to just mock what they see and so the family unit for the most part has been broken down and uh, we feel like it's our jobs to help to point people back in the right direction concerning what a true uh, uh, strong family unit is according to God's Word. Amen and I can't help but point out um, the fact that, you know, we've mentioned this throughout different broadcasts that, you know, we stand on the word and according to the word, you know, as you said, the family unit starts with that marriage, the husband and wife. And we believe that that is supposed to be one man and one woman, mm -hmm. contrary to some of the beliefs that have surfaced in society and even on uh, many of the television programs that we see and I know there's um, a few new ones, you know, where they directly contradict what the word says um, the family unit is supposed to be made up of and um, they call it the, the new normal or some things, something along that line where it's not just a man and a woman but, you know, it's two men or two women and um, I just want to make that clear as we're talking about the family unit, you know, we're talking about a, a family that consists of husband and wife and that husband and wife is one male and one female. Mm -hmm. um, again, because we go back to the word of God and that's what we stand on. And, and that's, of course, um, the only thing that is um, God's messengers we can teach or, or preach to anyone else who is listening. That's right. And, and, you know, <clears throat> like sports with people, you know, wanting to play sports when they're growing up, you have some who play basketball very well and then some who don't play very well for whatever reason. Uh, many people want to be married even though um, they may not understand the rules of marriage. Right. And that's the way it can be sometimes is people, you know, they want to... Uh, have a successful relationship without understanding the parameters that are involved, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here tonight, we're going to continue on in our discussion concerning the rules of engagement. Right. And uh, we've, we've talked about different things about resolving issues. And, and, you know, if you go back into those archives, you can see that uh, concerning resolving issues and all of these other things. And so tonight, uh, we're going to talk about the rules of engagement while you're resolving issues. So it, it's not just important, of course, to engage or to resolve issues, right. but it's important to set boundaries mm -hmm. for those issues to be resolved. Because if you, if you go outside of those bounds, then you, know, you won't resolve any issues. You'll just uh, continue, like what many people say, have the same argument over and over again. And so there are rules to 
uh, engaging. Now, you know, that's of course that's uncomfortable because sometimes we want to just keep the peace and just sweep things under the rug and just say, well, you know, uh, just to keep the peace, I'm not going to talk about it or, you know, and, and this and that. But if we're going to have a successful marriage, you're going to have to engage. You're going to have to make a decision sometimes. Okay, this is something that we need to discuss because if we don't discuss it, it can be detrimental to our marriage or right. to our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, now that we've determined that this is something that is necessary to discuss, as we talked about last week, you know, you have to determine whether or not it's necessary, just absolutely necessary. Once you've determined that it's necessary, then you have to, uh, we, we encourage you to pray before the engagement. Right. And so tonight, what we're going to continue to talk about, you know, is kind of what we started on last week, is setting the atmosphere for the engagement and what kind of atmosphere is proper for those deep discussions that mm -hmm. could just turn into an all-out war. And many of you who have been in relationships, you know exactly what we're talking about. You can start off talking about something just as simple, you know, and, and something that it seems like you should be able to discuss with no problems. But because you don't stick with the rules of engagement and because you don't play fair, fair so to speak, mm -hmm. you end up way over in left field somewhere. Now you're yelling and screaming and, you know, you got all of these emotions involved. Why? because you didn't stick to the proper protocol concerning the rules of engagement, mm -hmm. because you, you got outside of the boundaries. So it's not only important to, to, re, to discuss those issues, but know what rules to follow, you see, when you, when you have those issues. Right. And it's just like somebody, if you're playing basketball, uh, it's not just a good thing to know, okay, I want to get this ball in the hole, but if you don't know the rules for going there, in other words, you, you, you can't take the ball out on one end of the court and not dribble it to get to the other end of the court, right. you see? So it's not just enough to know what your destination is, but the proper ways to get there, mm -hmm. you see? And that's what we're talking about, the rules of engagement. You understand your destination, you want to engage so you can resolve issues, but you also want to understand what rules to abide by so that you can have a successful engagement, mm -hmm. so that you can, you can resolve those issues without any other issues, creating more issues, basically. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, as you, you're saying, we're going to move into talking about, you know, the atmosphere around that and what the atmosphere should be. We have to realize um, that sometimes we think along the lines of, oh, I'll be quiet or I'm not going to say anything to keep the peace. But oftentimes there's no peace inside of us when we do that, mm -hmm. when it's something that really needs to be addressed. And therefore, it affects the atmosphere whenever it comes time to address things mm -hmm. because we've allowed it to sit inside, um, trying to hide it, trying to, as you say, sweep it under the rug mm -hmm. um, for so long until the frustration starts to build. And sometimes that, that will affect the atmosphere and the outcome of those discussions. And, you know, when we need to engage and talk about different things, then that frustration starts to come out, you know, because we've allowed something to fester. You know, which is why it's so, so important um, to, you know, determine, you know, if this is bugging me day after day, then, you know, I do need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. We need to discuss it so we can, you know, find a resolution mm -hmm. to whatever the issue may be. That's right. That's right. And so one of the things uh, we, we want to determine concerning uh, setting the atmosphere is you want to determine what location to use. Mm -hmm. In other words, what, what the, what the right. natural physical setting is, mm -hmm. you see. And that's so important, that, you know, the, the setting. You don't want to have a, a deep discussion when there's a whole crowd of people around. Right. You, you're just asking for trouble, you see. So you want to make sure that when you are resolving issues and when you are engaging with your spouse, um, that they have your undivided attention, attention and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You have theirs, you see. And so you, you set that atmosphere. Uh, if you're going to do it in a room, you know, you, you want it to be somewhere private. And, you know, without all, all, all of the hoopla. And also you want to make sure that uh, you don't have basically interruptions, anticipated right. interruptions. Mm -hmm. And so that can mean turning the TV off, you see. In other words, so what, see, so what the TV needs to be on 
if you and I are talking, you see. So let's turn the TV off. Let's, you know, of course, as we stated last week, let's pray before we discuss. Mm -hmm. And we think it's important that you and your spouse hold hands while you're talking and face one another. Hold hands and face one another so that you can make, make eye contact with one another whenever you're engaging. And that's a big thing for you is <laughs> that eye contact, you see. And so we think that's important. Why? Because you're less likely to, to get riled up if you're holding hands, you see. So you want to keep in mind, see, what happens a lot of times before people engage, they're already boosted up. And so you're just a powder keg ready to explode. But see, holding hands, it basically um, keeps in your mind, okay, this is my spouse that I'm talking to. This is my loved one that I'm talking to. We're here to resolve. And so we think it's important that when you and your spouse are, uh, you know, one of the rules of engagement, you hold hands or be affectionate. You're touching one another while you're talking. You see, that keeps things calm. Another thing we can say is not to stand up, that neither one of you are standing right. when you're talking to one another. Why? Because when someone is standing up, uh, it, it, it could appear, you know, that they are riled up or that they are... Um, they can be intimidating. Intimidating, exactly. And so if you're sitting down, it helps to keep you calm. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to stand up and discuss whatever issues you have because... You don't want to start pacing back and forth. You don't want to, you know, uh, <laughs> you don't want to be looking down on the person if they're sitting down. Right. You know, you want to be as less uh, combative as possible. Right. You want to be as less threatening as possible. Mm -hmm. You see? And so nobody sits down to fight. You see? So if you sit down, that'll help keep that, you know, keep. Right. You want to make the atmosphere as calm as you possibly can. Make it as calm as you possibly can. Right, and I just wanted to uh, just, I guess, piggyback on something you said earlier about the um, distractions, about making sure there is few distractions as possible because it is important that, you know, if, if your spouse says, you know, hey, can we talk about whatever because we really need to resolve this or, you know, something has been bugging me and I want to get a better understanding, it is very important um, that they know they're being heard. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they need to know that they have your attention. And so, you know, you don't want to try to do it while you're watching television and trying to split your attention from, you know, with different things. You know, give your spouse your undivided attention. Let them know, hey, what you're saying means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I care about what you're saying. I care about what you're feeling. And so because I do. I'm going to give you my undivided attention right now because I sincerely um, care about us resolving whatever this is. Mm -hmm. and, and again, w with those distractions, you want to make sure that your, your children understand, hey, don't bother us right now. We're going over some things. So don't, you know, unless the house is on fire or, mm -hmm. you know, somebody choking or something, don't knock on this door or whatever. And so we think it's important that you do whatever you're doing behind closed doors. That whoever is in the home, whether it's children or whoever it may be, that they understand that you're in a discussion and so don't bother. Because sometimes, uh, you know, children can knock on a door or something like that and, and it can be frustrating to you because you're trying to work this out and you're having to stop here and then you're losing your train of thought mm -hmm. and all of that. And so it's important that whoever is in the home, children, cousin, whoever, that they understand, you know, that you know, that this is going on, that there's a discussion going on, that, you know, something needs to be worked out. And so, you know, not to bother you, you know, during that time. So it's important that you have each other's undivided attention. Right. Because, you know, if you're, if somebody's constantly knocking on the door, what does that do? It, it disturbs you and it, it can cause you to get riled up. It can cause you to even get frustrated, you know, because you're trying to work something out. And, you know, even though you may have your spouse's attention, you know, other people will keep coming in to interrupt. And before you know it, you're, you're really uh, frustrated about the interruptions, right. but you're bringing it into the conversation, <laughs> mm -hmm. you see. And so that's why we think it's important that people understand no interruptions while we're talking. And so, right. so you know, of course, on, on the other side of that, you want to make sure that it's not around other people. You're not doing it in the same room as other people, you know. All of these things, because uh, if other people are talking 
and you having to raise your voice, it could come across as you yelling and all of this other stuff. And so it's important that you pick a nice, quiet environment where you can discuss things, you know, where you can hold hands and, and you know, and really dig deep and, and discuss these things. <laughs> Amen. And let me tell you, if um, it, <laughs> you may say that sounds perfect in a perfect world, but, you know, hey, when my spouse and I discuss things, it don't always go that smoothly. And we understand that um, you may be at a point where you have to grow to that and you may have to really um, make an, an extra effort to practice doing that. Um, but I, I want to say this, that it's not impossible to do, you know, even if you find that you're around other people and it seems like an issue is arising, you can cut it off and step away from that, those people, you know, step into a quiet place or decide, okay, well, let's just wait until we can get to, you know, a quiet, private place to talk if you can't do it at that moment. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's important not to uh, bring other people in on that and, and not to allow, you know, them to be a part of that. And another thing is we talk about being in private places. And I know we talked about this very early on in our marriage. And this is especially important if you're at a stage where you and your spouse start off with a calm conversation and it ends up going into war and, and things, you know, you get emotional and things out of control and, and things like that. It is especially important, I think, that you don't have those discussions in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And you might remember us, you know, talking about this very early on. And um, I'll tell you the importance of that. Um, sometimes, you know, we all have discussions that we need to do in private and we might go step in the guest room or we might sit in the office. Sometimes we sit at the table. Mm -hmm. Um, and we especially had to do a lot of that early on in the marriages. We were still getting to know each other and kind of ironing out some of the kinks in our personalities, you know, as we were growing together. If you don't have that extra room and you have children, you might have to put them in the bedroom, you know, with some toys or the TV or something and close them off while you sit at the table. Mm -hmm. But it's important not to bring the friction, the tension, the um, anger, any kind of negative spirits into your bedroom because, you know, that bedroom represents a sacred place of love and compassion and, you know, you're, you're sleeping together and, you know, things like that. And so, you don't want that to become a war zone, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want that atmosphere of a war zone to be there, mm -hmm. you know. And so I would encourage, you know, us all if, like I said, if you haven't grown to that point, you know, where you can really just sit down and, you know, you all can be in each other's arms while you're discussing something very calmly, you know, without it turning into an argument or whatever, or if you think it's something that might very well go, you know, might become an argument, you know, try to find somewhere outside of the bedroom because you want to, um, you want to keep the atmosphere there right. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, we think the atmosphere in the entire home should be right, but we know sometimes, you know, conversations can, or discussions can turn into something that we didn't intend for it to turn into, mm -hmm. you know, and if you think it might be one of those things, you do that because it goes back to some of the things that we mentioned last week and probably two weeks before that about um, you don't go to bed angry. Mm -hmm. You know, things need to be resolved. And so um, that kind of goes along with that. Don't bring it to the bedroom to, the be to begin with. That's right. You know, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, getting under the covers and falling asleep before it's resolved. That's you know, right. try to sit at the table or sit somewhere else and, and discuss whatever needs to be discussed. That's right. And so not only is it, is it important to decide where to discuss, um, you know, your issues and, and to engage, but it's also important to decide when is a proper right. time for discussing, you know, these issues. Now, let's keep in mind, even, you know, those who are listening in, uh, this is through trial and error that, <laughs> you know, in fact, this is pretty much how this, this came to be, you know, mm -hmm. is, uh, and a lot of what we talk about is from us learning through our own experience. That's right. You know, and so when we talk here, it ain't, it's not because God just programmed us before we got married and we just had the perfect marriage and, you know, we never 
had to, you know, engage, you know, and never make mistakes during these things. Uh, it's, this is on the job training, you know. <laughs> Amen. And so this is how this came about. One day we had had a big disagreement about something and the Lord began to deal with me about, you know, rules of engagement. And, and so here uh, the timing is just as important, important as the, the setting. Mm -hmm. So here are some general things that we want to choose concerning timing. It is important that before you engage, that you think in the future, uh, you know, think ahead about what you need to do. Not a good idea to engage when there's food on the stove being cooked. You mm -hmm. see, because no, again, you don't want any interruptions and you don't want the food burning. So, you know, it's just important that it's not during dinner time when, when you know, it's time to eat or when the food is on the stove, mm -hmm. you know, being cooked, that, that's a no-no. Don't, don't do that. You want to make sure that you have plenty of time to finish whatever discussion, you know, you have to have to finish it. Right. And not only to finish the discussion, but you don't want to finish the discussion and then say, okay, we, we're done now. Let's get up and go, you know, because it's important that after you finish the, the discussion that you love on one another. Because, it, again, you know, when you have to have these discussions, it, it's not um, comfortable. Right. And, you know, so you, you, wanna, you, want, you want to have time set aside to love on one another after that. You know, maybe be affectionate towards an, one another or whatever. So it, it's important that timing is right. No, you know, don't try to do it in between this and that, you know, in between, you know, with, with the food being cooked and trying <laughs> to hurry up and serve the kids so they All can right. be quiet. You know, you don't want to feel rushed mm -hmm. during this because whoever it is that's feeling rushed, they won't give that person their undivided attention. Mm -hmm. I can't rightfully sit down with you and really listen to what you have to say if I'm thinking in five more minutes I got to get up and go turn the stove off. Right. Or, you know, I'm expecting a call in, at, in 10 minutes or whatever the case mm -hmm. is. That's, and really what that is, is disrespectful to your spouse. That's right. You see? And so you don't want to be that way. You don't, you know, so that's one thing. You don't want to do it while food is on the stove. Mm -hmm. You also don't want to do it um, uh, in, in strenuous situations. In other words, um, let's say on your way to work. All right. In other words, you know, one of you, maybe you're on the phone together and both of you are in the vehicle going to work at the same time. You don't want to rush that because of course if you're trying to get to work you're not going to have an hour or two to you know to get there or whatever so you don't want to do that in strenuous especially you think about it you're in traffic right and traffic itself is strenuous so what you have to think about is this before i engage what situation am i in and will this affect the way that i handle what we need to talk about mm -hmm. i need to be completely calm before we sit down to engage I don't need to have the residue of traffic, the residue of work on me. I don't need to still be frustrated about what happened at work before you and I sit down and discuss what right. we need to discuss. So in other words, uh, we're not going to do it on the way out the door to work, and it won't be the minute we step in the door from work. That's right. <laughs> That's Just, right. Uh, I guess, you know, sometimes, it, like I said, it, it might be a matter sometimes of stepping back and saying, okay, we were talking and something came up, but now is not the correct time to discuss it, but let's plan to do this later at this time, or let's plan to do this in another room, or, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's taking a walk, you know, you might be with a bunch of relatives, mm -hmm. or in a place where you really don't foresee yourself being away from the crowd of people for many hours or something but you know, taking a walk in the neighborhood or something you know that might even that that might work and i don't mean taking a walk alone i mean taking a walk <laughs> <laughs> talking with your spouse mm -hmm. <laughs> to discuss it that's right and and that's one thing you, you know the last thing you want to do is give your spouse the impression that what needs to be discussed is is you know on the back burner right. it's not important to you mm -hmm. because if it's important to them it should be important to you That's right. and we're going to say this you know i've heard couples say you know and have been told by you know um couples you know where their problem is not my problem or they're the ones that have a problem and let's make this clear 
<laughs> if one of you have a problem, you both have a problem, whether you know it or not. Now, you might not want to acknowledge that it's your problem, but it is your problem, you know, if your spouse have a problem, you know. That's right. And that's one of the things that's, that's wrong in marriages today is people disconnect from one another. And, and they don't care about one another's feelings, you know. You get upset, you have a bad day at work, whatever the case is, I don't care, you know, that's, but that's, that's the, we're supposed to be attached. If we are one, that's I'm right. supposed to feel the way that you feel about things, you see. Mm -hmm. And so if you're bothered by something, then I should be at least concerned enough to want to sit down and, and find out what's going on, right. you see. And so if, if there's something that we need to engage about, because oftentimes that's what happens is, uh, one spouse uh, feel like it's so important and another spouse, it might not be as important to them as what it is to the other, you see. But you have to realize that if it's important to them, that's your soulmate. That's, that's the one who God has for you. It, it need to be important to you, right. you see. And so just blowing it off, that's, that's a bad idea because what will happen over time that person who you've been blowing off concerning whatever issues that they're wanting to discuss, pretty soon they'll detach themselves. And then when it's your turn and so you're going through something and you want to discuss something, they're too detached to even care about what you're thinking, go care about what's bothering you, you see? And that just happens in marriage. That, it's a sad situation to be in, but that's what happens. And so let's not blow off one another's feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to sit down and discuss something that that's bothering you you know um then that's something that needs to happen you know and we don't need to even though it makes us uncomfortable because a lot of times uh, say for instance i have something that i want to discuss and it's about some something that you've done maybe you know a look or maybe a uh, answer that i was given that i didn't like or a tone that it was given in or whatever the case is well if you already know in the back of your mind what I'm wanting to discuss, you're not going to just come running to the table and say, well, let's go ahead, let's, let's do this because, you know, if it's important to you, it's important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, but we have to go out of our way to be that way is what I'm saying. You see what I mean? So if you want to discuss something with me, something with me about what I've done wrong or something that you perceive, you know, right. that I've done wrong, I have to have the attitude and I have to be humble enough to hear what you have to say concerning me. <laughs> that's right. And that's not something that comes programmed in people. Nobody right. want to be told about themselves. That's right. And so that makes us less likely to engage. And so in that, and I'm telling we're talking from experience now, in that we have to be prayerful. Okay, I know that this is gonna be something concerning an action that I did or something that I've done. So Lord, help me to be receptive. 